I will go on record in saying that Mia Goth, I think, deserved an award in her performance in Pearl. I cannot really say the same about Maxine. It's not that her performance is any better or worse. It's that the material that she was given to work with in Pearl was just all that much more better and juicier. I love Mia Goth too. I just wish I knew what happened to her eyebrows. Join me and my roommates, Dr. Ed, Nurse Natasha, Gary Gray, and Hans the Butler as we talk about all things horror. Well, here we are again with me and my crazy roommates. It's been about a year. We've moved to a different bungalow, and since we've covered X and Pearl, that means we have to talk about Maxine, right? Yes! 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 No, not really. Maxine is directed by Ty West, stars Mia Goth, Kevin Bacon... Yeah, yeah, anyone watching knows all this shit already. Get to the damn review. For those of you who watch my reviews on X and Pearl knows I really love those movies, so really the big question here is, does Maxine live up to those two? Yes! 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 Nope! As you can see, most of us feel that it did, but I can see why some people might have a torn opinion on this one. It wasn't a horror movie! Then maybe you should have paid more attention to the trailer. Let's get this in the open right now. Maxine isn't really a horror movie, it's more of a mystery suspense thriller, which is pretty clear if you paid attention to the trailers. It's a different style movie, the same way that X and Pearl were both different styles from each other. X was like a 70s styled slasher and Pearl was like a Technicolor fantasy. And because I wasn't necessarily expecting a horror movie, I wasn't let down by the fact that I didn't watch one. I didn't get what I was expecting. And I don't care how good it was, I'll be mad at that forever. I was expecting sex, violence, and gore. And we got sex and gore, just not in the quantities we were expecting. I must say it was pretty refreshing going to a movie not really knowing exactly what to expect. Like a well-wrapped birthday present with chocolate inside. So here's a quick spoiler-free breakdown of the plot before we get into the thick of this review. And before I get too drunk to continue. It's 1985. Oh, just another retro-styled 80s movie filled with nostalgia. Years after the events of X, and Maxine is now a porn star, but she's looking to escape that genre of film and make it into the real movies. What's wrong with doing porn? How do you think I got through nursing school? Just when Maxine thinks she's going to get her big break, her past comes back to haunt her. She starts being blackmailed and stalked by somebody who knows that she had something to do with the murders at the farmhouse years earlier. And someone starts killing her friends. It is a very simple plot, but it's all in the delivery. Yes, it was a simple plot, but so was X, and Pearl was too. It just had a bit more guts to it. Get up in them guts! Oh, Ed. But where all these movies shine is not necessarily just the plot. It's the atmosphere and tension building, and making something that you've seen a thousand times feel like something new again. And this movie delivers on all that. Another nostalgia movie that takes place in the 80s. Unlike a lot of other 80s nostalgia films that focus on the innocence of the 80s and being a kid in the 80s and having fun and everything is a good time and adventurous, this movie takes you into the seedier areas of the 80s. Like seedy strip clubs, peep shows, porn shops. That sounds like your resume. That was a long time ago. And also the notorious Night Stalker serial killer is all over the news. So this movie really makes the 80s feel like more of a dangerous time than a fun one. The sense of doom and danger is draped over every shot in this film. Every moment we spend with Maxine is unsettling because you know she's in danger no matter where she is in this city. She is vulnerable and it keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire movie even though she's a total badass. That's the way I feel when Ed threatens to put me through the wood chipper in the back. So even though the plot of the movie is really just Maxine trying to figure out who her stalker is, the core of the movie is essentially about Hollywood, religion, and the movie business. 
religion, Hollywood, it's all the same shit. It's just a fucking cult. Not to be as blunt as my buddy Ed over here, but I really think that's what Ty West is trying to put forward in this film. The parallels between the corruption in Hollywood, the movie business essentially, and organized religion is drawn pretty vividly in this movie. I can draw vividly too. Look, there's a picture of me riding a unicorn and I'm stomping Ed into the mud after he threatened to put me through the wood chipper. Hey! The settings in this movie are great. Yes, we have your typical seedy LA locations, all the damp, dirty, dark back alleyways, but we also have the Hollywood backlot, which when filled with a cast and crew isn't all that scary. But if you're alone all by yourself like Maxine is and being chased down by Kevin Bacon of all people, it's pretty damn scary. Kevin Bacon is scary and I never thought he was sexy. Even in Footloose, he looks like a mouse or a rat or a weasel or something. The chase even goes into the Psycho movie set from the classic movie Psycho. How many times I have to tell you it's pronounced psycho? Speaking of Kevin Bacon, it's needless to say that the cast and the acting are outstanding in this movie. But I do believe that Mia Goth's best performance in the entire trilogy was in Pearl. No, 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 it was X. You get to see her tits. And you get to see her fuck. Pearl, in many ways, was kind of a one-woman show. This movie is a bit more of an ensemble and Mia Goth doesn't have the same material and the same amount of material to work with in this to make her shine as bright as she shines in Pearl. Not to say that that's good or bad, it's just a different movie. And that's what it's supposed to be. A different movie, a different genre. They're all different genre movies. And that's perfectly fine because that's exactly what this movie was supposed to be. A different genre than X and a different genre than Pearl. The same story told throughout three movies with three totally different genres. It's pretty brilliant. This movie does a great job of taking expectations and cliches and flipping them on their ass. What did you just say about my ass? Like we've seen in X, Maxine isn't our typical pretty little cute final girl character. She's a badass porn star that fucks for a living. She's a badass and in many ways Maxine is actually more in control of this situation than her stalker even is. She punches the shit out of Kevin Bacon with a fistful of keys. And that's not even spoiling anything because Kevin Bacon isn't her real stalker. There's a bigger reveal at the end. Which was a little bit too obvious for me. Even I saw it coming. Yes, the big reveal at the end wasn't as big as a surprise that I'd really hoped. But the one issue I did have with this movie, and it's not even that big of an issue, it's just something I'm going to nitpick at, is that I thought the ending was a bit too big. Nothing is wrong with a little too big. I don't want to spoil the ending for those who haven't seen it, but basically the ending of this movie was a bit too epic in comparison to what we saw in the two previous films. It didn't really seem to fit with those two as far as how grand it got. But it was entertaining with gunfights and fire and robes and cults and... Oh, did I give too much away? Because let's face it, X and Pearl had a lot of epic stuff happening in the movie, but in the grand scheme of things, it was happening to mundane people in the middle of nowhere. This takes things to a much larger scale. I didn't mind the end at all. I thought it was fucking fun. Then why did you say you didn't like the movie, Ed? Because you didn't get to see Mia Goth's tits. That's pretty shallow, Ed. I know what I like. I like Mia Goth's tits. What about mine? They're all right, I guess. And there's some great kills in this movie, even though it doesn't have the body count of a slasher, because it isn't a slasher, every kill delivers big time. I'm glad I don't have testicles. That scene would have made me vomit. I did vomit into my popcorn, and it still had half a bag left. Yeah, but it didn't stop you from finishing the bag of popcorn. When I was a dominatrix, I squashed many man's testicles, but not like that. And another thing I wasn't too keen on in this movie, and again, I'm just nitpicking here, was the choice of pop music from the 80s that they put in the movie. It was all your typical 80s nostalgia stuff that you would hear in like any other 80s nostalgia movie. 
You have the St. Elmo Fire theme, the ZZ Top, New Order, pretty much all the stuff you hear in like a Brat Pack movie. I just love those movies like Pretty in Pink. I would have chosen Ducky. I was hoping for more like deeper cuts, you know, B-sides or even more original score like fake 80s music made for this world that Ty West had created. They were totally playing homage to the Brat Pack movies with the music choices, which seemed a little bit heavy-handed to me and out of place. And there were visual and stylistic nods to more of the unpopular, darker 80s movies like Cruising and Manhunter. That being said, Ty West did use some interesting contrasts with the music, like when St. Elmo's Fire is playing in the background as Mia Goth is beating the living shit out of Kevin Bacon. Little things like that make you realize that the filmmakers and the cast are having just as much fun with this as they are being totally serious about it at the same time. And you love to see that in a movie. It's great watching a movie when you can tell that everyone involved in it is having a blast and putting their all into it. And you could totally see that watching this movie and it makes you enjoy it even more. So, was Maxine a good movie? Yes, it was great. What is as good as the first two? I don't know. I don't think it's my favorite of the three, but that isn't knocking it. I just think the first two were so damn near perfect in their simplicity. And this one, trying to be really epic in its climax, yes! kind of strayed from that a bit and almost got a little bit too big for itself. But that's just a small nitpick of a pretty damn good movie and a good conclusion to the trilogy. Like my teacher at school always said, keep it simple stupid. Easy for you to say. Pretty interesting to see Ty West who started his career making pretty un-Hollywood low-budget movies, finishing this trilogy with it taking place in Hollywood with the climax taking place in the Hollywood Hills. It's almost like he's saying, look, I made it. I'm making big Hollywood movies despite the bullshit Hollywood system. And he's kind of poking fun of that and celebrating it at the same time in this movie, which is really fun. So yes, do yourself a favor and go check out Maxine while it's still in the theaters. Sit back and enjoy the ride because it's one hell of a ride. It's a pretty damn entertaining movie it has a lot to say, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. So what more can you ask for in a fun American giallo, which is basically what this movie is. I could go for some jello. It's pronounced giallo. There's always room for giallo. 